Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, I'm gonna explain three different ways to display a list of multiple items in a pivot table filter. So in this example here, I just have a simple pivot table with the salesperson up here in the filters area of the pivot table. And when we select the filter drop-down menu here and select multiple items in this list and hit okay, we just see this multiple items displayed right here. We don't actually see the items that are being filtered for. And this can sometimes be confusing or cause us to have to click this menu again to go in and see which items are filtered for. So I have a few different ways to actually display these filter items. The first one is to use a slicer like we have right here. We can also use a connected pivot table and list the filter items in cells right here or we can create a list, uh, a comma separated list of all the items right here. And in this video, I'm gonna explain how all three of these solutions work. They all just use either slicers, pivot tables, or a very simple formula. So there's no macros here or nothing too complex. It's pretty simple to implement. And the nice part is once uh, we have this set up, we can just add filters or remove filters from our list here and hit okay. And as you can see, all of our sources or solutions here are updated to display that filter criteria. Okay, so I'm gonna start fresh here with just our pivot table and we're gonna walk through each of these solutions. So the first solution is to just add a slicer to this pivot table. And this is very simple to do. We just select any cell inside the pivot table here and we'll go to the analyze tab on the ribbon and choose insert slicer. And then we're gonna insert the, sli the slicer of the field in our filters area. So in this case, the salesperson field is in our filters area. So I'm just gonna check that box and then hit okay. And that's going to add this slicer right here uh, to the sheet. And then when we select multiple items here in the list, so if we add an to our filter criteria and hit okay, we can see that an has been is being highlighted here in the slicer. So we can see all these items here in the slicer that are highlighted. Those are our filter criteria in this box right here in the filter drop-down menu. Now this is a pretty simple solution that does display the filter criteria. However, if you have a lot of items in your list here and it's really long, then those items might not be displayed properly and you might have to do a lot of scrolling to see which items are selected. So that leads us to the next solution of listing out the filter criteria in cells. So we're now gonna take a look at how to create a list of cells in the worksheet that contain the filter criteria. So to do this, we're gonna use a connected pivot table. And we're basically gonna use this slicer here to connect two pivot tables together. So we're still gonna use this slicer. I'm just gonna move it over uh, right now. And we're gonna go ahead and create a duplicate copy of our existing pivot table here. So we're just gonna select the entire pivot table, just select all the cells of the pivot table, and you can hit Control C to copy it or right click copy, and then Control V to paste. Just paste it over here in some blank cells or uh, Control V or right click paste right there. So we now have a duplicate copy of our pivot table, and we're just gonna modify this a little bit to show that salesperson field in the rows area. So I'm gonna just select any cell inside of our pivot table here, and we're gonna go over to the pivot table field list. I'm gonna remove category from the rows area. I'm also gonna remove this field from the values area. And then we're gonna take the field that's in our filters area, the salesperson field, and we're gonna move that down to the rows area. And so now we can see here, we have a list of our filter criteria. If we look over here in our filter dropdown menu, we have these three items right here, Andrew, Ann, and Laura uh, filtered for. If we were to add Jan here, just check this box and hit okay, we could see that we also have Jan now added to this pivot table right here. So these cells contain a list of our filter criteria. And we can modify this if we wanted to, to just take out the grand totals, just right click and remove grand total, and that'll remove that there. And now we basically have a list of our filter criteria. And this works because both of these pivot tables are connected by this slicer. So I'll move this slicer back over here. And if we right click anywhere on the slicer and go to report connections right here or pivot table connections, that will open up this menu. And this shows us that both of these pivot tables here on this tutorial sheet, I'm currently on this sheet called tutorial, 
both of the pivot tables here in this sheet are connected. And we can see that because both of these checkboxes are checked. So these pivot tables are both connected to this slicer. And that means whenever one change is made in this pivot table here, that change will also be made in this pivot table over here. The filter, the filtering is the change that we're making. So if we apply a filter or remove a filter here in this pivot table and hit OK, this pivot table will also be filtered because the slicer is connected to both pivot tables and we'll see that list right here. So this is great if you wanna use this, uh, the filter criteria in some other formula in your financial model or something like that. If you wanna bring that filter criteria into the worksheet to use it for something else and list it right here. Or if you have a lot of items that you're filtering for and you wanna see a really long list of all those items that are being filtered for, you can see that right here. And of course you can move this pivot table around. You can move it over to the left side of the original pivot table or move it anywhere really on this sheet or you you can even move it to a different sheet if you'd like and just use it for just about any purpose you want to. You could also change this row labels here and, and you could say filter criteria instead of uh, row labels, something like that. Or you could put the, uh, the field name up there with filter criteria so you can determine or understand what's being listed there in those cells. So the third way to display our filter criteria is in a single cell with a list of comma separated values. And we can do that with the new text join function. So we can do this all with a formula. We still need all of the setup work we've already done with this additional pivot table here and the connected slicer. And then we can just use the new text join formula to cr create this string of values and separate them with commas. So this is a new formula or a new function um, uh, that was introduced in Excel 2016 and it's called text join just like this. If you don't have Excel 2016, you can also use the concatenate function for this. Uh, text join just makes this process a lot easier. So I'm going to type text join here and tab into that. And now text join uh, gives us basically three different arguments. The first one here is the delimiter. And in this case here, we're just going to delimit, use a delimiter of a comma and a space. So we're going to put that, uh, wrap that in quotes. So I have a quote mark, comma, space, and then quotation mark. And then uh, I'm going to hit a comma and we can choose whether or not to ignore empty cells. In this case, I do want to ignore empty cells. So I'm going to type a true right there or just tab into that and then comma. And then finally, we can add or specify a range of cells that contain the values we want to concatenate. So in this case here, I want to concatenate these values right here, but I'm not sure how long this list is going to be. It could be a lot longer uh, if there's more filter criteria applied to it. So in this case, I could probably just select all of column E, use a whole column reference here of all of column E to join any values in that column and also ignore any empty values with this argument right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close off the argument or the formula there with the parentheses and then hit enter. And now we can see here that we're getting a list of all of our filter criteria uh, joined by a string. So it's basically a comma separated list of values. And if we didn't want to show this filter criteria right here where it says filter criteria in the formula, it's sh that's just this cell right here. We can actually hide this cell in the pivot table. So if you just select this pivot table here and then go up to the design tab, or I'm sorry, the analyze or options tab, we're going to click this button here that says field headers. So just uh, uh, click that. That'll turn the field headers off. We won't see the field headers here in the pivot table. And so now I just have this list of values for our filter criteria. And that's what this formula, this text join formula is returning right here as well. So again, as we go here and select um, additional items, additional items to filter for in our list and click OK, we'll see all of those results return right here in our formula, this, com this comma separated list of values. Or we can see them right here in this range, this column right here. And then, of course, we can see them in the slicer as well. So you can use any of these solutions. You don't have to use all of them, uh, but it is kind of additive in the sense that we do need the slicer. We also need the connected pivot table to eventually create this solution here, which is that list of comma separated values. But if you didn't want to display those all on one page, you could hide the column here hide the slicer and get rid of or just move it out of the way or you actually hide the shape and just show uh, this list right here. So there's a lot of different options there and display it however you like. 
but you should be able to use at least one of those ways to get around this multiple items display name and actually see your filter criteria on the sheet. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help answer them. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.